The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds. As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. Absolutely perfect this morning. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. You know, Mexico is right over there. We are in Texas, South Texas, in the deep Texas brush country in Live Oak County, halfway between Freer and George West. And we're gonna start out showing you some does today that we're gonna start with feeding tortillas. I'm Lynn Collard with a Gist Kinsman Ranch down here in George West, Texas. My job down here is to maintain this deer herd. Um, I have my children and my wife with me um, and they help me do everything we do on this ranch. It's a family deal down here. The Gist Kinsman Ranch is out here in the middle of nowhere between uh, George West and Freer, Texas. When Doc bought this property deep down here in South Texas, he didn't have the deer that he, was, that he thought he might have on this ranch. So he decided to get into deer breeding business. Um, and when he did that, he did that with the goal of, of enhancing his genetics on his property, which also uh, brings the value of your property up on these ranches, which is a big thing nowadays. And it's just blossomed from there. We've done, we've done that, we've achieved that goal. Now we're in the field that we're breeding deer to bless other people with the same thing we've done in this, on this property. This is in the middle of nowhere. I mean, the South Texas brush country, it is a sea of thorns. And living in the sea of thorns is a wonderful family that has taken care of the Gist Kinsman deer farm. And it is truly a family farm. All right, right now it is, uh, well, it's the end of August right now. And these fawns are weaned. And how long does it take to wean a fawn? Well. By about 90 to 100 days, these fawns are weaned. So these guys right here, although some are big and some are not so big, what we're gonna show you, they're all virtually the same age and they're weaned. Come on up here. Now take a look at these guys, okay? From the time these were little babies, Caden, let me see one of those. By the time when these guys were all little babies, they stayed on their mothers and to get colostrum until they were oh, about a day or two old. Okay, and once they were a day or two old, they got pulled into the deer barn and they were bottle fed and they were given treats as soon as they could start eating. And these treats are nothing more than just tortillas. And so the tortillas allow these girls to, well, they, they're getting a nice little treat, but they'll allow the owner of the deer to touch them and be with them and to be able to make sure that they're good and healthy okay and to train them to be nice and calm now some people wonder if these are bucks or does and i'm going to let lynn tell you what they are and why these are these are all doe fawns uh, again so we can keep these deer calm so i can medicate them if need be if they've got an issue uh, buck fawns i do not bottle feed i do not want them real calm um, just for the simple fact is they've got antlers on and that's not a good thing. Yep, and take a look at this white one. What's the story on it? This is a gladiator doe fawn. Um, it was a shock to everybody out here. It's the first albino I've ever had. Uh, I gotta keep a little sunscreen on her. She just, we just love this deer to death. Look at its ears. You can tell its ears are sunburned, folks. It's sunburned because it has no hair on it, pink skin. But out of how many deer have you had born since you've been a deer breeder and that's the first white one you've had? Oh, I couldn't even begin, probably 2,000 fawns easy. 
easy, if not more, first white fawn I've ever had. That just shows you how rare they are. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by New Dart, leading the industry in accuracy. South Texas, there are a lot of challenges due to the climate that the deer farmer faces on today's program. We're going to be going over what some of those challenges are, how they grow big deer down here at Gis Kinsman Ranch. Don't you walk out of here. Howdy, I'm Keith. How you doing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Howdy. My name is Keith. And your number is 301. Hey, baby. Look at this. These girls right here are gentle. And the reason why they're gentle is because they have a special way they treat them when they're babies. We'll show you that here in a minute. But what we're gonna do now, we're gonna... <laughs> hey, that's my cameraman, baby girl. We're gonna show you one way that these girls were treated when they were babies and they're still treated this way now. And gentle deer are good deer. Look at this. Now these deer, hand me those tortillas, Caden. All right, all right, come on out here. Hey girls, come on. Come on, mama. Come on, girls. Hey. Here. Come on, girls. Here, you get it started, bud. All right, Caden winds up. Caden's Lynn's son. He's his youngest son. And Caden winds up with his older brother and his mother, I mean his dad. This is a, this is a family deer farm. They really run this for Doc Guest. And uh, what happens, they've been down here for quite some time. And although these deer, they don't know me, they know Lynn and Caden and the family like crazy. But you'll notice how gentle they are. Uh, these deer are gentle because they're supposed to be gentle. Now, these guys, I mean, just like any, any, like a dog, you know, a dog will wind up knowing its owner and know a stranger. Well, these deer know, know strangers and they're, some of them are kind of iffy around strangers. Come on, come on. Now you may be wondering, why in the world would you want gentle deer? Gentle deer, when deer are gentle, they're typically healthier. You can, you can take a look at them if they're ill, if they look like they need to have medical treatment, you can take care of them. Uh, when you have gentle deer, they wind up, uh, you have a higher success breeding them, and that's what it's all about. We're trying to make sure that they're healthy and that we breed them and have a high degree of success when we do breed them. I mentioned to you earlier that we wind up, we have challenges, uh, at every deer farm's got challenges, and one of the challenges that we have here is the soil, the, the or lack of good soil. This is sand. I mean, take a look at this. And the problem with that is, I mean, it's, it's very arid down here. We don't get a lot of moisture. And this sand, because, of the, uh, because it's so fine, a lot of times these deer will develop a cough. And that cough can get actually into pneumonia because these animals are ingesting, that they're, they're breathing in that dust in their lungs. Oh, sweetheart. And so what we wind up doing is by being able to come in and treat deer like this every day, you can listen, see if anybody's coughing, which they're not coughing and make sure everybody's in good shape. But this is just one of the challenges that they have down here. Hey, tell me, do deer eat tortillas or what? Now I've seen them eat cookies and I treat mine with record rack golden deer nuggets, but I have never seen deer treated with My tortillas. My deer love tortillas. <laughs> one of the things that deer need to have regardless where they live, and especially down here where it gets hot, is shade. So every one of these pens is gonna have a little cover like this to provide additional shade for the deer. Besides the shade, one thing that every deer pen has is one of these. It's a water trough. And you'll notice how clean this water is. I mean, it's beautiful. And the reason why is down here, I mean, these deer need to consume a lot of water. Uh, the more we found as deer farmers, the more feed and water that you can get in the deer, the healthier they're gonna be. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds. Now with the borders closed for bringing deer into the state of Texas, regardless of where they're from, you may wonder how do they change the genetics up? And the answer is real simple, it's through artificial insemination. 
All right, we talk about deer, and this is Max Bow Danger right here. I mean, just take a look at him. He's an absolute beautiful deer. This is the line that they are breeding right here at Giss Kinsman. And to show you what danger can throw, this is a danger yearling son named uh, Redemption. I mean, he's a giant. But I want to show you, come on over here. We've got, uh, well, we've got a big old hog here, but that's a completely different story. This right here is Renegade. We showed you Renegade out in the pens. I mean, he's an old man now, but in his prime, he was one heck of a deer. And come on with me over here. This deer is Pentagon at three years old. This is his uh, rack. He was over 300 inches. And all this is really the result of artificial insemination. This is the barn we do all our AI in right here. We move all the furniture out of here, bring these deer into sterile environment, do, uh, do the breeding, and then I take them out in the pen and that's where they'll fawn. Well, you know, people wind up thinking that we want these bucks gentle. We really don't want the bucks gentle like we do the does. And uh, the reason why is because bucks can be dangerous if they're gentle. And these guys are hanging back just like they're supposed to be. So who do we have? These deer here are Maxbow Danger Sons. I've got yearlings. I've got a couple of two-year-olds in here. And then I've got uh, Pentagon. He's our pure Texas deer. Mm -hmm. He's coming four. And then I have a uh, renegade in here that is 14 and a half years old. Um, that's okay. what I have in this pen. Hold on, I want to go back and I want, I want to stop you here. Max Bow Danger. That is uh, anybody in the deer industry, those names are right there just ding, 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 ding. Ring of success. Those are, that's a great bloodline. Uh, which ones of these are out of that bloodline? Do they have a certain kind of tag? They do. All the green tags in this pen are yearlings. Wow. And the, the two yellow tags in here are two-year-olds. Mm -hmm. And I've got one purple tag that's a two-year-old out of Maxbow Danger. Okay, so all of them would be out of the Maxbow Danger. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everything in here, except uh, for Pentagon and Renegade. That's the only two in this pen that are not. Okay. And we talked about earlier about y'all kind of restructuring your genetic program, kind of where you're going. And, and the goal is to grow as big a typical deer as you can, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, th now I want to take a look at big typical deer. Uh, Pentagon is the great big typical four-year-old you said in there. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, is he pure Texas? He's pure Texas. Wow. What He's a pretty Texas. deer. And then, uh, I mean, uh, a lot of people may not be able to determine the age of a deer by looking at it. I want you all to look out there real close. Look at those deer. There's one that should stand out as looking like the old man. Okay. Tell them about the old man. The, the old man kind of is weird looking this year, but he deserves that, I guess. He's always been a big 220, 230 inch deer for nine years, 10 mm -hmm. years. He's packed G1s that are 12 to 13 inches, except for this year. Uh, but he's still, he's just a monarch in my opinion. He's just a great deer. And so uh, that's an old deer, folks. I mean, take a look at him. A lot of people, like I said, they can't tell an old deer by looking at him. Well, look at that deer right there. That's, right. that's pretty that's clear right. that's an old one. And he's thrown a lot of big deer that have come on this farm right yes, here, hasn't he? Yes, that's true. That's true. Guess Kinsman is down halfway, well, not halfway, but in between Freer and George West, Texas, about two hours south of San Antonio. It's in the brush country. And if somebody would like to come down here and take a look at your deer, give them a telephone number to reach you so they can schedule an appointment. They could call me at area code 575-519-8458. Any better time of year to come? Mainly in the month of August if they want to see these bucks still with their horns on. Yeah, because these right here, folks, so these are these are young deer for the most part, but they're out of that Maxbow danger line and they are unbelievable, good genetics. And uh, they're gonna put it on next year. Now, I really like that guy over there. Oh, that guy just turned his head. Ooh, that's a pretty deer. That's All a right, well, year old. you know, we've shown you what, uh, you know, what we've got in this pen, but I wanna also go take a look and show everybody what y'all have got in your turnout pen. And you call it turnout pen, pasture deer, stalker deer, uh, these deer to help other deer farmers as well as, uh, as landowners help repopulate and rechange the genetics in their on their land. So let's go take a look at them okay, now. Let's go.
I never get tired of doing this, but you know what? We got to go show everybody the bucks. Now, the deer here, every deer farm really starts with good solid doe lines. And these does come from an unbelievable line within our industry. And here at Giz Kinsman, they really wound up starting back over just recently with a new genetic line. And we're gonna go take a look at some bucks right now. But you girls have a good morning, okay? This particular area of South Texas is, uh, well, it's very, very dry. The big mesquite trees are ancient and uh, there's a sea of thorns, nothing but uh, rattlesnakes down here, ant piles, uh, big bucks, and what's over there, oh, about 100 miles, is the Texas coast. And so what happens, the moisture off that coast comes through here, and right now the wind is blowing like crazy. Got a bunch of thunderheads up there that later on in the afternoon, if it gets hot, hopefully they'll get a shower out of it. Genetics, let's talk about changing genetics up. You can purchase what we call pasture deer, stalker deer, turnout deer if you can, to uh, change the genetics and, and do it instantly. But when you change the genetics in a deer pen, like they have with Maxbo Danger here, it takes a long time to see the results. Well, right now they have yearling bucks on the ground. You can see how good they are. And you know that the bloodline is there, so down the road, it can only get better. Okay. All right, so these guys in here, what you call turnout deer then? That's correct. And what we do with these deer if they don't make a breeding program for our breeders, mm -hmm. uh, we've got guys that come in and buy them and they'll put them in their DMP pens or breeder pens. And then the other bucks that we don't sell that way, mm -hmm. there'll be ranches that'll come in here that'll buy these bloodlines, turn them out on their ranches to enhance their genetics. I think it's a real important part of the deer business that people need to understand that, uh, that we're growing these deer to help other people Genetically. That's correct. Okay? We, the, the problem is trophy hunting has killed off the top end over and over and over for decades. And consequently, most people that have uh, their land, they don't see big deer because the genetics are really shot out, the top genetics. And so what happens is, is all these turnout deer, what I call pasture deer or stalker deer, all these deer have got great bloodlines. I mean, we talk about Max Bow Danger. That's what y'all are building your program on That's now. That's correct. And you got Pentagon, you got these other deer that y'all have had a history of producing big deer. The genetics on these animals right here, although they may not be good enough to produce in your program, because y'all have really raised the bar, they're good enough to produce in almost anybody else's program. That's correct. And so, if somebody doesn't want to use one for a breeder, you can take them and you can buy them and put them out on your land. And what better way to improve the genetics? That's right. That's right. Okay, so when they do that, do you how do they do you deliver them? We do. We deliver them. I load them in the trailer and I take them to them, and then we turn them out in the pasture and let them go. Okay. Now, and folks, this is all legal. This is all, all legal. I mean, we wind up. We get permits, and every deer's got. You can see out there, they've got an ear tag in its ear. Every deer is uh, is tracked, and it's. Uh, I mean, we get permits through the Parks and Wildlife Department to, in order to do this, and it really helps private landowners not just raise the value of their land because we've raised the quality of the wildlife, but have a better experience overall. That's true. Well, y'all have got some really good ones. Okay, if somebody wants information, give them a telephone number. Area code five seven five. 519-8458. That is pretty cool. I like these turnout bucks. They may uh, they may not be as big as what you're looking for, but they're big enough for I think, they are. what most people are looking for. They are. All right, that does it for today's show. And if y'all have any questions or comments, you can shoot me an email. All you need to do is just go to my website. I'm Keith Warren. I'd like to thank you for watching Deer and Wildlife Stories. <laughs>